In a CNBC exclusive this morning is Evercore ISI founder and chairman Ed Hyman on his list of the biggest market risks. Of course, the U.S.-China trade war, this inverted curve, and the push to curb big tech. Ed, always good to have you. Good morning. Carl, thank you very much. Have a good weekend. Uh, uh, that's a lot to watch. What's number one? I'd say the yield curve is number one. Uh, trade would be number two. Uh, but I also think, Carl, there, there are a lot of positives out there, but those are the biggest risks. Uh, some try to uh, dismiss the uh, the curve element, looking at various parts of the, you know, the slice. Why do you think it's number one? Uh, because uh, every time in the past it's it's uh, worked. You mentioned earlier about when uh, you get uh, oil doubles. Uh, that's a precursor to a recession. And what happens is inflation goes way up, the Fed tightens aggressively, and then long rates uh, go below the Fed funds rate. And that's where we are right now. Uh, so it makes me, you know, quite uncomfortable from that point of view. But it has to stay this way for another couple of months uh, before it gives a real signal. Huh, interesting. How do we know if we're the Fed? How do we know um, if this is a, an enduring framework vis-a-vis uh, -vis China or if this is uh, the hallmark of a mercurial president who could make it all go away tomorrow? <laughs> Carl, no. you, you know as well as I do, you don't know. So I think the Fed has to go on the supposition that the trade tensions could go on for quite a while. And it's a sort of cat and mouse uh, between the two. Uh, but uh, I think uh, they're going to ease in July and then ease a couple of more times uh, to try and get the yield curve uh, positive again, but also to put some insurance in the system uh, for the trade issue. I mean, I why do you think Ed, there I'm just wondering why there's so much discrepancy out there. You know, it, it, depending on who you talk to, this economy is great. It's booming. Others say, you know, we're, we're heading into recession. And, and I get that there's a different impact of a trade war on the services part of the economy and the manufacturing part of the economy. But why can't we figure out what the underlying economy is actually doing? So I think, uh, Sarah, I think we can figure out what the economy is doing. Uh, I talk to people all the time. And what they ask me all the time is, well, it's doing well now. How quickly could you get into a recession? And I'd say about six months if it was just to roll over. Uh, but I travel around constantly. I was down in Florida this week. Every place I go to is booming. Retail sales, you mentioned a second ago, uh, they're strong. And Manpower Inc., which is another way to look at employment, that came out this week, it's going straight up. Uh, so you got employment, retail sales, uh, you mentioned consumer confidence, visual inspection. So the economy right now is doing well. As in, in real contrast to what's going on in China and Europe, which are, are still slowing. Why, given what you just said, Ed, why would we cut in July? Uh, first, insurance, but the one thing we haven't talked about yet is inflation. And inflation is really coming in low. This week, you got the core CPI, it was low. Import prices declined a point and a half. We have eight core measures around the world. Uh, they've all slowed in the past year. And uh, oil's down now, so that's another element. As you know, the Fed has been talking over and over about trying to get inflation up to two, and it's closer to one and a half at the moment. Yeah, uh, this UMICH survey now, just a few moments ago, and uh, the five-year outlook, 2-2 two, two is the lowest in the 40 years we've been asking that question. So, Carl, you're, you got, well, you got you're a step ahead of me. I followed that survey very closely, and it's very erratic, so you shouldn't take the 2-2, two, too two seriously, uh, but it's not 2-8. And so the Fed uh, is now looking at an inflation rate uh, being well below 2%. And I like that consumer inflation expectations because you get past the measurement problems. So, Ed, let's say that you and the bond market are correct and the Fed starts to lay the groundwork for a cut next week and then cuts in July. Then what? Can, can this rally keep on going or is it just going to be more cuts, more cuts, more cuts? Well, you still have a sort of negative in, uh, backdrop, but uh, my, my general uh, advice to people is don't fight the Fed. And now you have a, a, a pretty clear uh, easing bias by the Fed. And the same is true for ECB. Uh, China's central bank is going to cut another couple of triple R's, and they're going to have some fiscal stimulus. Uh, so you have about as clear a global easing cycle as you're going to get. And I think that biases uh, financial assets up. Actually, all asset prices up. Uh, yeah, you got Russia today, a 25 Russia basis today. points. 
Uh, Australia, obviously, that was a big move. So you think basically the, the world is giving the Fed cover to do this? World's doing, but also the Fed is giving the, the world cover. I mean, when they were in the uh, tighten, 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 they put pressure on other central banks to lean in that direction, and now that's completely gone. I will say that the, uh, the Australian policy rate is now one and a quarter, and the Fed uh, policy rate is two and a half. And the differences between the two economies are not significant. Uh, so the impression I get at the moment is that the Fed funds rate is simply too high. So if we get the cut, uh, or at least clear signs that it's coming, what's the upside for equities? And are you a believer that when easing cycles begin, the pain for equities is usually not far behind? Uh, no, I don't think the e I don't think the pain is far behind. I think uh, as long as you're in an easing cycle, uh, it's generally pretty constructive. Uh, but I just have the bias that the path of least resistance is higher uh, for the stock market. I don't have a particular uh, point estimate for where it's going to go, but I think it's a pretty good environment.